What's going on guys? Just got something in the mail today and I've been waiting on this one for a while so thought I'd make a quick video. Um, these are the stock center caps. So I've got the chrome version of this wheel. I know they have a matte 18 inch and also a 17 inch wheel. I think that came on the base model. Mine seems to be a mix between the premium and the sport and it's got these. So uh, I actually really like the stock wheel. I know most people who are building these things usually swap them out for something bigger. Um, I, however, really like the stock wheels. But one thing that I've done, as you can tell on the car, is I've debadged just about everything. So I did the SEMA trunk liner. I did, you know, I did the traditional just debadge. I've got the SEMA grill. Um, so basically, this is the last thing on the outside of the car, at least, with any sort of badge. And you know, I was always torn between finding a, a similar wheel that didn't have them or, you know, f figuring out a way to either sand this down and re-chrome it or um, me and my friend had always kind of talked back and forth about how hard that would be. But we both agreed that this car would look awesome if we could just find a way to get center caps without badges. So anyways, fast forward to about two months ago, I'm actually in the middle of trying to repair these because I just kind of given up on finding a, a wheel that I wanted to use so I was going to repair these and these are really hard to repair actually they're either too tight or they're too loose and they rattle this one's not so bad the other ones have like three or four tabs missing and I'm like making my own tabs it's a nightmare so I'm googling to find uh, replacements and I come across these so these are the Otis Inc custom center caps and they are exactly what I'm looking for <laughs> how awesome is that so they are identical in shape um, they do seem to be a little bit lighter than the other ones um, but as far as the appearance they are exactly what I'm looking for so these are going to replace these guys, and it's going to really complete the look of the car, in my opinion. So these are around, don't don't quote me, I think it's around 170 US. I'll post the price up here, but I would have paid three times it because, like I said, I really like these wheels, and I think the only thing holding them back was this giant logo. So anyways, uh, no explanation really required. Let's go slap them on the car and uh, see what they look like. If you're an OG subscriber, you might recognize the location. This is the top of Queen E for those in Vancouver. But for the rest of you, this is uh, this is where I filmed the first video. So one of you guys commented that I should do a summary video on everything I've done to the car. And I like that idea, so I thought we could come full circle and uh, I'd shoot it here. So I'm just gonna do a little walk around on the car. It's still pretty dirty. Um, just kind of go through all this all the aesthetic stuff that I've changed which isn't much and then we'll pop the hood and I'll uh, go through what's been done to the car so first up we are running swift lowering springs in the front it was a, an attempt to get that stock Cali rake <laughs> somewhat leveled out go around to the back here so this is the newest addition these are our Otis Inc center caps um, they're basically just stock without the infinity logo I think you look great. I know a lot of people are quick to replace these wheels, but I'm actually one that really likes them. I think they look good on the car, so. And continuing that trend, it was one of the first things I did to the car, but fully debadged and uh, used the 2001 SEMA chrome trim 
uh, finisher. So this usually says infinity across it, but the SEMA one is just blank. And then for the exhaust, which will be our segue point, the exhaust is a set of Nissan JBA Shorty headers and it goes into an X-pipe, just a cheap Amazon X-pipe. Then that goes down into a set of Thrush resonators and then into this vibrant racing muffler with my OG Magnaflow tips welded on. I think it looks somewhat stock from the outside, but it's got a nice sound. Cut to a sound clip of me doing some unsafe things. So one of the first things I did to this car was I bought this 01 SEMA grill and I just taped off the good chrome and just gave it a rattle can paint job. It probably needs to be touched up, but it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good from about six feet away. So inside the car is pretty much stock. So other than our cheapo eBay floor mats, which I believe were originally for a GX60, we've got our Rock Auto dash cover from Dash Designs. And other than that, it's pretty much stock um, aesthetically. We did delete the CD player in exchange for the Grom audio. So I got the arc score instead of CD player. Um, I got the Innovate air fuel gauge, got that off Craigslist. We tucked that up for extra sleep or stealthiness, right? And I believe that's pretty much it for interior mods. So let's pop the hood. So there's been many revisions of the intake, but this is the current one. So it's a stock intake. Um, it's got a K&N drop-in. It's completely gutted. So the whole air box is just basically flat, almost paper thin at some points. And then I've actually taken a epoxy and poured it in. So it's really, really smooth. The idea was to uh, mimic a GTR airbox, which is very similar in design. I've got the intake elbow replaced with a intercooler piping. I've got a breather, so the stock PCV has been deleted, and this is our breather. So it's got a one-way check valve so that this can only feed cold air into the crankcase, and then the PCV side flows into this catch can, and then this catch can goes all the way into the front into this 1997 Ford Cobra smog pump, and then Finally into our racing Mountain Dew bottle. I've ported the throttle body. It's um, just very minor, just, just kind of smoothing out all the edges. I uh, went ahead and made my own grounding kit. Yes, you can roast me for using red wire. I know it's not the prettiest thing, but I just added a six gauge wire to each side of the block and then also on the, one to the throttle body. Another thing that we're doing is we're also using the Audi R8 coil pack. So my friend makes a plug and play kit for them. Um, we've got the Aeromotive fuel pressure gauge. So inevitably when we go force induction or if we start spraying nitrous, this will be really crucial to. As far as performance stuff, I've added a shift kit. So it's got the TransLab shift correction kit. I also use a 2005 to 2000, or sorry, 2004 to 2005 uh, M45 TCM. Got a whole video on that, but it basically updates the shifts, allows you to uh, hold um, red line without upshifting, a few other goodies. Um, I've got a rear end from a 2006 M45, so that changes the final ratio from 276 to 3357. So another thing I did to the intake was I deleted the resonators, and in their place, I put this home HVAC vent that actually will plumb air into the air box. So it's got a little bit of a ram air effect. It's pretty ghetto, it's one of the first things I ever did, but uh, it works, so it stays on the car. We've got our cheapo eBay rain guards. So one of the goals that I had for this car was to be completely dry underneath. And currently, um, both my power steering pump and rack and both valve covers are leaking pretty bad. So I've got most of the parts either on the way or at home. That will be the next step. We'll be getting this thing kind of reliable, dialed in. Um, there is some, there is a couple issues with the steering. So when I did the headers um, on the driver's side, it is very close to the steering shaft. 
So what I'll most likely have to do is when I replace the rack, I will have to change to a polyurethane bushing and that will eliminate a lot of the play and uh, the flex in the actual rack so that when I turn right, it won't rub at all. So um, that's, that's gonna go in pretty soon. Just gotta get some measurements. I'll have a whole video on that, of course. So another thing I have to do is I have to take these wheels off and get them refinished because as you can tell, there's a fair bit of oxidization. And while it's not nearly that bad on the inside, um, even the slightest amount of pitting on the bead will create a small leak. And both my rears leak pretty bad. So it takes about three days for them to get from 30 PSI down to about 22. And that's right where the sensor goes off. So they won't go completely flat, but it is annoying to have to keep uh, reinflating them every few days. So once the wheels are done, the valve covers, the power steering is all fixed. I'm just gonna drive this car as is, and I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna take it on road trips until the next stage. And the next stage comes when I refresh the motor. When I refresh the motor, I'm gonna do all the seals and all the gaskets and all that stuff, but I'm also going to swap in VH45 pistons and rods. Now, I'm not the first one to come up with this idea. I actually saw it on Nico Club. The guy never actually went through with it, but he did do all the measurements, and as far as I can tell, this will totally work. So the reason why we'd want to go to a VH rod and piston is because the design of our VK head, uh, combined with the VH piston, will actually increase compression. Um, I'm no mathematician, but from what I can tell, it's around 10.9 to 1. So that is a significant bump in compression. Uh, the rods are actually significantly thicker, so both the VK and VH45 rods are forged, but the VH is a 22 millimeter uh, at its thinnest point, and the VK is actually 18 and a half millimeters. Now, that's not super crucial unless you're pushing big power, but if you are gonna be you know, adding boost into the mix, then uh, this will definitely give you some more breathing room as far as how far in the rev range you can go with boost. So a lot of people who boost VK45s will tell you that the rods are weak, and they're not wrong, it's just that most of the people who are boosting these things are using a supercharger, um, like a Roots or a Twin Screw supercharger. So boost comes on very early, and what happens is you're putting too much cylinder pressure on the stock rod. So if you're gonna use a supercharger, going to a VH45 rod makes a lot of sense because A, they're dirt cheap, you could probably get the whole engine for $700, but the aftermarket uh, support is much greater as well. So if you wanted to go to Carrillo rods and CP pistons, you'd be better off buying VH45 Carrillo rods and, and uh, CP pistons because they're gonna be cheaper. They're about $800 cheaper just for the pistons. And I, I don't know why, maybe it's just the design, but more people are modifying VH45s than they are VK45s. And if the parts are interchangeable, I would recommend taking advantage of that. So here's my idea. I was looking at the serpentine belt diagram, which I'll post on the screen. And if you look at it, we've got power steering, we've got a water pump, and we've got a hydraulic fan. So if we replace those with electric versions of them, we would have two places on our serpentine belt. So not only is that gonna free up horsepower, but it's also gonna give us room for a supercharger bracket. So if you've ever seen a supercharger bracket, they kind of sit in line with the serpentine belt, but they just kind of sit off to the side. So if we got rid of the air box, we would have more than enough room for a supercharger. So I'm thinking some sort of ram air into the front of the blower, serpentine belt pulls on the back end of it, air gets routed into our intake. I mean, if you look, I'll post up a picture of like a three valve Mustang supercharger kit, and it's almost identical. Like, I wonder if I could just buy one of these kits and just retrofit it. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna go home and give this thing a wash. Um, as always, I really appreciate it. All the likes and subs. Uh, if you got any questions, ah, this fucking giant bee. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, thank you again for the 200 subs. That's awesome. Love you guys. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.